Growing up, my parents always told me that I had an eye for color. I didn't know exactly what they meant by that, but they eventually told me it was because I always chose the right colors for any drawing project. As an adult now, I'm still intrigued by color and its potential, even though my house is pretty minimal in color and I wear mostly black and dark colors. Painting with watercolors poses its own unique challenges because there are variables like granulation, chroma, and transparency to consider. In this video, we'll cover just the basics of what color theory is, what a color wheel is, color bias, and some basic color schemes. Hi there, I'm Audrey, your watercolor bestie, and welcome to my studio. If you like this video and want to start your own watercolor journey, I have a free course, Watercolor Basics for the Absolute Beginner, and you can sign up using the link in the description below. So what is color theory? Color theory is a set of rules that explains what happens when you mix colors. These rules apply to every art form, including watercolors, and color theory was originally formed by the three primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. From there, you can mix primary colors to create secondary colors, the green, purple, and orange. And when you mix a primary and a secondary, you get tertiary, which are the hyphenated color names. And these mixtures of colors create the color wheel. And if you were to split it down the middle like this, you'd get warm colors on the right and cool colors on the left. If you mix all the primary colors equally, you would get black. Now you may have noticed that there is more than one type of primary color. And what I mean by that is that each primary color has a color bias. This also means that no primary color is completely pure. This is what I mean. Notice my two reds here. This one has a yellow bias and looks warmer compared to this red that has a blue bias and is cool. Same goes for the yellow and blue. Each one has a different primary color bias and it leans towards a secondary color. So this red that has a yellow bias leans towards orange. When I first got my Lucas 1862 watercolor set of 48 colors, I was a little overwhelmed by how many colors there were. So I wanted to organize my colors by first dividing them into warm versions and cool versions of the color. That really helped me organize my palette so that when I mix colors, I make sure to stay within the cool or warm bias so that I can avoid getting muddy colors. Color mixing is a whole nother video, but in short, if you want bright, clean colors, choose colors that have the same secondary color bias. What I mean by that is that this cool yellow with a cool blue work well together to create a vibrant green because they both lean towards green. Or this cool red with a warm blue are going to lean towards purple and create a very vibrant purple. But sometimes the muddy muted colors are preferred and that's okay. As long as you're not experimenting on the fly as you're painting, you wanna make informed choices when it comes to color so that you're not surprised by what happens on the paper. Now there are a few basic color schemes that you should be aware of. Try painting with these color schemes with abstract shapes to help get you started. Monochromatic is a one color scheme that includes variations of that one color. If I find a color that really speaks to me in that moment, I'll usually paint a monochromatic painting. And that's how I felt when I painted these little wreaths and these snowscapes. The key to a monochromatic painting is showing a wide range of values. Complementary colors are two colors that are opposite on a color wheel. Using complementary colors can create a lot of great contrast. Use wrongly and the colors are going to compete against each other. So make sure that one of the two colors is a little bit more dominant and then use various values to help the viewer. Mixing complementary colors will also result in a neutral color. And lastly, analogous colors are three colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. I like to use this color scheme a lot, especially when I'm painting florals, because it helps the viewer's eye effortlessly move from one element to the next. Even so, make sure that one of the three colors is slightly more dominant so that they don't compete against each other. Everything is about the right balance. So if you haven't painted a color wheel yet, you can download my color wheel template using the link in the description below. 
Although it's a free download, you can show your appreciation by paying what you want. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. I know this was a quick intro into Color Basics. So if you want to learn more, you can take my Skillshare class on how to paint watercolor grays and other courses where I explore color. Please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and leave a comment down below and share your experience with the color wheel and color schemes. Happy painting. Bye.